All right, I want to show you how to make a mini album yourself. This is for a grandma mini album. Um, go ahead and make sure your Cafe Rojo font is installed if you want to follow along with me. First of all, get your text tool and type grandma. Change the font to Cafe Rojo. All right, we're going to stretch this a little bit. We want this to be 11 inches wide. And then we want to ungroup it. Control U or Command on a Mac. All right, so now we want to make each letter 3.9 inches tall. So you can stretch them individually. I find it easier to use the scale window. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my scale window right here. Choose each letter. I'm not going to lock the aspect ratio. Type in a, a height of 3.9 inches for each one of those. I can't do it all together because the proportions are different for each letter. Okay, they're all 3.9 inches. Now I'm going to select all of them, go to my Align window, and a line bottom. So they're all sitting on the same baseline. Now I want to drag each letter in towards the first one and I want oh probably about a quarter inch overlap. and just to even it out a little I'm going to choose space horizontally and again a line bottom. I guess we could have skipped that before since we have to do it again now. Alright, now we're going to draw a rectangle with the rectangle tool here from the left edge of this first letter all the way to the last letter and we want to overlap the letter itself but not go into the open area of the A and we're going to have to resize the top just a little bit drag it down so there's just a little bit of each letter showing along the top so I've got the right edge here, so it's not covering this hole here. Okay, so I want to select the rectangle, which it is. I want to make a copy, so Control C or Command C. Then I want to make one copy for each of these letters exactly on top. So I'm going to go Control F six times. You can see now there's layer upon layer of rectangle there. All right, so now I'm going to associate one rectangle for each of these letters. So click on the click off to the side so there's nothing selected. Click the rectangle once. Drag it over so it's just overlapping the G. S hold shift and click on the G so there's one rectangle and the G selected together. Hit Control G to group or Command G on a Mac. Click off to the side. I'm going to repeat this for each rectangle. So select one rectangle, 
drag it in so it's overlapping the R, hold shift and select the R, group it with a control G. Click off, choose one rectangle, bring it into the A, shift, click on the A so they're together, group it. Select the next rectangle, bring it in for the N, shift, click on the N, group it. Next one, for the letter D, shift, click on the D, group it. I'm clicking off every time before I choose the rectangle again. This one is for the M group, and that leaves one rectangle left for this A. So shift, click on the A, and group it. Now at this point, it helps to make sure you've grouped them correctly, and it helps differentiate the letters. So I'm going to put a fill color on each one of these. And if they're grouped correctly, They should fill in with color, just like you expect. Okay, now it's hidden, so I'm going to choose each one of these. I'm going to bring it up a layer by holding my control key or command and my right bracket, and that brings it up one layer. And you just have to click the bracket as many times as necessary to bring it up. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to weld each letter except for the first letter. I'll show you why in just a second. Select that letter down here in the bottom. It's your weld button. This letter, weld. This letter, weld. This one, weld. It's already grouped with its rectangle. Now we're just turning it into a merge instead of just stuck together. Alright, this letter G, we need to do something about him just doesn't look very good. So, I'm going to ungroup it. I want that rectangle to go all the way to the bottom here. I'm just going to make sure that's aligned at the bottom. There we go. Okay, so I've got these two pieces that are not grouped. I'm going to make a copy, so Control C, Control V, and now I want to get a cutout of this area to apply it back to here. So I'm going to go to my Modify Tools and choose Divide. Alright, so I just chose Divide. That gives me all of these pieces. I want this one right here. First, select the original rectangle and its G and choose Weld. Now I'm going to bring this piece over, zoom in even closer, and place it on top of there. I'm going to use the Subtract function choose this, hold your shift and select the other, choose subtract. There we go. Now we just cut that out of there. We don't need this anymore, so select it, delete it. Alright, now we've got all of our letters. I'm going to go to my align window just to make sure it looks good. Align left, 
and a line bottom and that's how it's going to cut out. Now if you want to go through and clean up some bits you can uh, double click on each letter and you can use your point edit tools to clean some of this up and you may have noticed while you were working on it some little bits that bother you. We want it to cut really smoothly if we're cutting chipboard so things like this I want to change if you hold your shift key you can hold more than select more than one node at a time just make it look good and you can decide how picky you want to be on that okay so now you have all of these base points so you want to cut it three times once in chipboard lightweight chipboard cereal box weight once in pattern paper or print and cut for this direction and once in the reverse image so go to your replicate window duplicate below and then mirror left okay so this one it's going to be chipboard. I'm going to color it brown. These are going to be their own pattern papers for each letter, and these are going to be their own pattern paper for each letter. And again, you could do it print and cut, or you can do it pattern paper. But really, it's that simple. And if you have any questions, please let me know.